All right, hey everybody, TG Watkins. It is May 4th, and you know what? I am here in the Stock Charts headquarters down in Redmond, Washington. They're about a 30 minute drive from where I live up in the Washington area. It's been great. They've got a new studio up and running, and I'm here in their podcast room. You guys can see it's pretty nicely well decked out. So, a great team, been enjoying meeting everybody and just having a great time here. So, uh, you'll see me in a few more episodes. We just finished recording the final bar, and uh, this is my typical Thursday video that I make for you guys that comes out on Friday. And uh, yeah, they've just been extending so much hospitality and uh, it's been just a, a real joy working with everybody so um, yeah good to see you guys over here at stockcharts.com and uh, yeah let's dive into the charts and see what's going on the first thing to kind of notice is well let's talk about FOMC right we had the FOMC yesterday and well they raised 25 basis points I think pretty much that was expected uh, I think the market would have loved to have heard a little bit more dovishness from Jerome Powell talking something about uh, uh, you know yes we're gonna raise here 25 but then after that we're gonna we're gonna start thinking about pausing and we're gonna you know uh, you know this will be the last one they wanted something a little bit more concrete but I gotta admit Jerome Powell towed the hawkish line and kept that up and he he didn't give any clues or any answers to uh, yes or definitely we're gonna we're gonna pause or anything else like that so um, we'll have to see what happens on the next one but for now they're still towing the line trying to be hawkish and trying to say we're gonna we're gonna stick to it even though a few things are breaking out there like the banks and stuff I think generally we know that we are on track for more things breaking but we are on track for of, you know, recession, basically. Like, we just know that this is what's going to be happening out there, and so we need to kind of go with it. What has been amazing is that the market, the S&P, has been able to stay up and drift upward throughout this whole time, even though interest rates have been raised and, and all the other things with the banks and everything else like that. However, it does seem to me like we are starting to finally get into a point where there might be a change. And I think that that change is to the downside. I'll show you guys examples of what I'm looking at. You know, the S&P is up here at its previous high, couldn't get past it, whereas any other time that we've been seeing, it's been been able to kind of claw, claw through it. But here we are kind of hitting a, a brick wall, and it is coincided with the S&P being up at its, at, at its high, you know, at resistance, and the, and the IWM is at its lows, looking like it's bear flagging into some major resistance and going down. Plus, we have been seeing breadth just terrible participation has been terrible um, you know in from from the small caps to the large caps uh, per, there's been a divergence there and participation is down and then we've also seen within the S&P that the number of stocks over their 200 day or their 50 day has been going down even though the markets have up so there have been fewer stocks all the way around no matter which way you slice it fewer stocks have been participating in this move up so um, yeah it kind of does feel like we're getting into the, the final stretches of something uh, changing uh, sell and may go away summer season you know the, it does tend to get weak slower all that kind of stuff um, so just kind of buckle in and hang on because I think some I think we're gonna start seeing some some fireworks show up um, all right so let's kind of get into it a couple of things I want to show you specifically from the moxie indicator and I tell you this has been a very very exciting uh, two weeks basically I we have been in the moxie room over at simplertrading.com we have been trading this thing and doing a pretty good job with it so we we got out of our long positions and went short right about there you can see that uh, the moxie indicator fired right on time we even here on the 15 minute time frame we even had a couple of inverse trampling moves. Price should not be over the 50 if the Moxie indicator is below zero. And the other thing I want to call your attention to is look what we just had here. This was the FOMC. This was Wednesday. This was price basically pushing up, up, up. And then Jerome Powell kind of spoke and there was a whole lot of you know, wish wash back and forth. But what was this? This was price trying to push up across a downtrending 15 minute 50 with the Moxie indicator below zero. That is another inverse trampling move. This and these are exactly the same thing. They're the same setup. And so this is the consistency and the repetitiveness that we can apply to the markets using the rules that I've come up with, the Moxie indicator and all this other stuff to help us figure out where things are gonna go. Now, not only was this an inverse trampling move, look at the hourly chart. We also had price move up and the Moxie indicator stay below zero. We were all over this. We had to take a little bit of heat. I got in early here and then we added a second piece here and then the market rolled over all in one day. I mean, this, this market, this for the last two weeks has been just bonkers. We went long down here and we got the move that I thought we were gonna get in one day and then it continued to push and then we went short and we got the move I was expecting 
in one day. So just wild to the upside, wild to the downside, and we've been getting all of it. And then we went short yesterday on the FOMC, which again, worked out perfectly here, again with that hourly inverse trampling move. And then the other thing that I've been pointing out is the inverse elf shoe. And we've gotten that, we've got that, and we got that. They're all the same pattern. You know, I think we, we as humans can recognize when something's a box, even though it might be a rectangle, uh, but a box is a box is a box. They just come in different containers or different sizes and different shapes, but we recognize when it's a box. So it's the same thing. These are all inverse elf shoes. They just kind of come in different formations, but they're all, they're all there. And they've all started with inverse trampling moves on the hourly time frame. So yeah, some craziness that's happening there. Now, if we also look at the UVIX or the UVXY, whichever one you want to do, we've been seeing a lot of a lot of volume come into this sector and this name, ETF, the leveraged volatility index. And <clears throat> look, we have the Moxie indicator firing right there. That's when we got our first move. So again, just right on time. And then what we noticed is price coming down like this. And what do we notice? The Moxie indicator stayed above zero, another trampling move. So the SPY did an inverse trampling move. The UVX, UVIX did a regular trampling move. So these things have been talking together pretty well. And you can see there was a pretty big move up like that. Now, Going into FOMC, I could tell that this was too big of a move. It was likely to pull back. Guided the Moxie traders right into this. I said price will at least go into the 15 minute 50. So I said, let's just wait. Let's see how this goes. Probably going to fade off a little bit. And sure enough, what did this turn into? A regular trampling move. So just like the SPY did an inverse trampling move on the 15 minute time frame, the UVX, UVIX did a regular trampling move on the 15 minute time frame, and boom, we got move to the upside. So this has been working nicely. We've got trampling moves, inverse trampling moves all over the place. And then I think we're gonna get uh, what looks to be a, a uh, elf shoe setting up here on the daily chart as well. The other thing, and I've been mentioning this, talking about this to people out there and you know subscribers and YouTube channels and stuff. I'm just gonna put it out there. I don't wanna put too much weight into it yet, but I do wanna make note of it. Here on the daily chart, we have the Moxie indicator staying above zero, even though price is below the 50. That, just like this, is a potential trampoline move. And you can see, look the kind of move that we get from a trampoline move. And so it makes me wonder what kind of move might we be getting from this daily trampoline move. Now, again, it's volatility, it's the UVIX, um, you know, it can be a little bit weird. So I just want to make note of it and uh, we'll have to see if it continues to actually make big waves. Uh, we also know that we have the VIX. Of course, the VIX has been up. And you know the old adage, uh, the VIX low look out, uh, VIX low look out below, and uh, that is coming through for sure. And again, with the Moxie indicator, you can see the divergences. You know, right here, price down, Moxie indicator up, and you can see right there and right there, the Moxie indicator fired to the upside. So yeah, we're starting to see some uh, real shake and bake in these areas. Uh, then if we kind of look around, if we just show you the Nasdaq real quick, I'm going to show you that there were another some inverse trampoline moves. So you can see here again, price over the hourly 50, the Moxie indicator below zero, inverse trampoline move. We even saw this well ahead of this. Now, this is what I'm talking about. There were some crazy moves in the market. We saw this inverse trampoline move here on the hourly chart like days in advance. I mean, we even talked about this. There's like, hey, heads up, this thing's really calling my attention. And then we got the move and then amazingly, huge, huge move to the upside. Like that was, a, that was a big, big short squeeze. It was basically off the back of the Microsoft earnings and then meta earnings and it just shot the market up. But we could tell because of the Moxie indicator that this thing was getting stretched and even though it was making new highs, it was unlikely to stay up there because the Moxie indicator was still below zero. And uh, given enough time, that worked out. So yeah, that's that's been pretty nice for us. And then if we look at the IWM, I want to show you guys this because this, this really does seem, and actually, let me just get over to a you know, bigger charts so we can see this a little bit better. There really does seem to be something changing. And I, I think that the IWM is the clearest thing to, to show us this and tell us. If we look back here, we've seen that for a year, I think, I think straight, yeah, May, right there, a year, the IWM has been going sideways. Now, it hasn't really been too much of a problem yet. And you can see every time that price got to the daily 50, it's been able to cross it. And you can see the Moxie indicator was, you know, either crossing through zero or already over zero, but the, those Moxie indicators were nice and strong. You know, look at them. They just were green, moving up, looking really, really good. But then what do we have now? Now things look different. We have the 50 crossing back below the 200. So we talk about, uh, I mean, death cross, uh, 50 back below the 200. Um, so that was kind of shortly lived. 
And if we look at the NASDAQ and the S&P, uh, they do have their 50s over the 200, but that doesn't have to stay. And the IWM, I think, is showing us that that can be a temporary thing. So now what do we have? Well, we have price what looks to be running into, bear flagging uh, right into the underside of a downtrending daily 50. And look at the Moxie indicator. Not very good. I mean, that thing, that thing looks dead as a doorknob. It, it's not going anyplace. It is definitely not doing what it's done in the past, has it? Or is it? No, it's not doing well. So the IWM seems to be the thing that is giving me the clearest signal of uh, what might be happening or what may be coming to the markets because the divergences between the S&P up and the IWM down, it can only exist for a period of time. And we might be at that point where it's starting to matter. And look at this on the hourly chart. And you know, we had a couple moves up here. All of them were inverse trampling moves as well. Now, coming up after this, we have, we have uh, Apple as kind of the, the final mega cap earnings. In fact, they might be out right now. I'll have to look. I'm you know, in the stock chart studio, so I've been a little busy over here. It'll be very interesting to see what, what, they, what that uh, situation is. And it looks to me like Apple is basically you know, running out of steam. You know, if I were to look at this thing, I would say, man, that thing has been up there for quite some time, and I'm just not sure what it's going to do. Okay, I was looking at my other computer screen. It looks like Apple earnings are out, and uh, doesn't look like Apple moved too much, up a little bit, maybe 168. So just kind of right back up there. So we'll have to see how long that actually stays and what it's going to do. It, I do find it interesting. It didn't really move much. So that being said, now that we have that information and it hasn't moved too crazily, I'm looking at this and saying, you know, it is coming up into basically prior highs. And I just wonder how much further can this go? You know, you're, you're looking at this, there's, here's a high, here's a high, and it's just kind of right there. And I've also been looking at this, look, price has been going up, Moxie indicator has been going down. So it's telling us that at every time price wants to go up, the Moxie indicator is just not supporting it. I mean, look, below zero, below zero, even though price is trying to push up. So I look at this and I also look at the daily chart and I say, boy, this has been a long time since price has, has even come back down or tested or touched the daily 50. Seems problematic. And if we actually come over here to even the higher time frame, uh, it has been such a, a big move to the upside. The issue is it's starting to put in gaps between price and the moving averages. You know, look at this, between price and the monthly 10. And look what happens. When price gets too far away from the monthly 10, what does it do? It comes back to the monthly 10. And so the likelihood of price coming back to the monthly 10 is starting to seem like it's um, you know, maybe upon us. And if we look at the weekly chart, this thing has been floating basically right over the 8 EMA on the weekly chart. That's great for a strong trend, but that doesn't tend to last for too long. What's more likely to happen is at some point, price would dip to the 21. You can see just time and time again, when we you know, finally break off the 8, they, they do make some pretty big moves to the downside. So I would be careful, even though earnings are out and seem like they didn't damage anything too much, there's just a lot of air below price. And I would start watching for indications of um, upward momentum starting to peter out and it might start bringing things down. Now, on that note, we have Apple that's up. We have NVIDIA that has also been up. And we look at these things, and NVIDIA is kind of doing the same thing as Apple. It is just wildly up there. How long can these things up, be up here? And we know that participation in the market has been very narrow. And so I look at these things. We have Microsoft that's up. Google is not really doing much. Amazon, not really doing much. Netflix has been sideways for a while. Meta has been up too. So we basically have three or four names that are really holding the market up, and they are extended. And so I just look at this and say, hey, from kind of a common sense standpoint, how much longer can this hold up? And we need to be careful about watching these names that have been leading and seeing how long they can keep going. And if they start to crumble, they start to peter out and start to pull back a little bit, that could also kind of give us a signal for what the market's going to be doing next. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thanks again to Stock Charts for giving me their room and uh, spending the day with them. And we'll see you guys soon. Thanks again. Beep.